warm welcome to UPRTOU online classes. Today we are going to start a new series on research methodology. Research methodology is covered in the area of commerce as well as in management. When you come to MCOM, you are going to read this paper in MCOM 112 and when you are a student of MBA, you are going to read this paper in the second semester that is MBA 2.6. Research methodology is very important for commerce, management and all the financial activity because for any decision making, the base you required is the proper research. R&D is the base for getting the profit and getting the maximum utilization of the resources. Now let us see that what is research methodology. Research, research is composed of two words, re and search. Re, re is a prefix, prefix means it is put before the search means you are going to put the re before the search that is re is a prefix meaning again, anew and over again. It means that you are going to find something new or something has already been found and you are going to see the same thing with a different perception or some new or value addition you are going to add on that specific topic. Search. Search is a verb meaning to examine closely and carefully, to test and to try or to probe. Means Search means to examine carefully, to probe, to try, to test. Means here you are going to select a topic and on the basis of that topic you have to probe that what are the new areas in which you are going to explore and find something new. So, research together is a noun describing a careful, systematic, patient study and is investigating in the field of knowledge undertaken to establish the facts and principle. It is a patient study. You require patience over here because you have to carefully observe, analyze and interpret it. Research methodology is based on the data interpretation. When we deal with research methodology in the area of commerce and management, you have to go with the data. Now research in simple terms refers to search for knowledge, means here whatever you are going to search is going to be beneficial for the knowledge industry. It is a scientific and systematic search for information, means Whatever you are going to search, you are going to validate that specific thing on certain scientific measures. While it is a systematic approach also, you are not going to say that this is going to happen. If this is going to happen, you have to use certain tools, certain statistical tools, certain models. You have to maintain, you have to make certain models and on that model, you have to prove that this thing is going to happen on a particular topic or issue, it is also known as the art of scientific investigation. Means whatever you are going to get over here is backed by scientific investigation. Means everything you are going to write in your research is backed by scientific investigation. Definition. According to Redman and Mori in 1923, Research is a systemized effort to gain new knowledge. It is an academic activity and therefore the term should be used in a technical sense. Technical sense means that whatever you are going to say, if you are going to say that in a cricket match, the chances of winning of India in the World Cup is 70%, then you have to prove this on the technical grounds means the percentage of wins, the percentage of loss, the country with whom they are going to play, all these things you have to calculate and according to the probability you are going to calculate that what are the chances of India to get the next World Cup. 
According to Clifford Woody in the book of Kothari 1988, research compromises defining and redefining means you have to define certain terms, whatever topic you are going to take and on that topic you have to define that what are the parameters on which your research is going to comprise. Now redefining means you have taken, for example, we have taken two, three definitions over here, but there are a lot of definitions of research. So defining three definitions and redefining by different other definitions. So all these things are taken into consideration while we are going to conduct R&D. Now formulating hypothesis. What is hypothesis? Hypothesis is a one line statement of a problem. Whatever your problem of the study is, you are going to frame it by a simple sentence. If you are going to do a study that how many people are eating rice in Uttar Pradesh, then you have to take an hypothesis that majority of people in Uttar Pradesh used to eat rice. This line is known as hypothesis. When there is no difference between the sample and the universe, it is known as null hypothesis. When we say that is a difference between the sample and the universe, we say it is an alternative hypothesis. Collecting, organizing and evaluating data. Collecting data means you have to collect data by the different methods. You, have to, you are going to collect data by questionnaires, schedules. By these tools you can get the data. And after collecting of data, you are going to organize the data. You are going to make a master panel in which you are going to keep all the data and according to the statistical tool, you are going to use that data. Then evaluating that data. How you are going to evaluate the data? You are going to evaluate the data by the help of the statistical tools. There are different statistical tools. In research methodology, in commerce and management, we used to have got two types of statistical tools, that is parametric and non-parametric tools. If you are, your study is based on the parametric studies, you are going to use parametric tools. If your study is based on the non-parametric test, you are going to use non-parametric test. Same way, if your study is quantified study, you are going to apply quantified data. And from quantified data, you have got quantified statistical measures, statistical tools. If your study is based on the qualified data, there are various statistical tools which is applicable in the qualified data. And the next one is making deductions and reaching conclusions. Making deductions means what? Sometimes when we used to frame a questionnaire, there are different people who used to fill the questionnaire. And they adopt a bias attitude in filling the questionnaire. So there are some necessary deductions which has been required to get a proper result. And this deviation should be kept away so that you are going to get a pinpoint result. And finally, carefully testing the conclusions to determine whether they fit the formulated hypothesis or not. So after you have collected the data, you have evaluated the data, and you have made the reductions, you have to see that whether whatever you have done is appropriate to find the formulated hypothesis, whether it is fit for the hypothesis or not. Means you have to test the hypothesis. If your data is going to say that this hypothesis has been accepted, means the R&D is proper. To sum up, research is an original additional to the available knowledge which contributes to its further advancement. Means it's an original work of yours. Means a person who is conducting R&D, a person who is doing research and development, his own masterpiece should be there. He should not copy from others and say it is my research. No. He should work on its own, make its own model, derive its own statistical tools if possible or take the help of the different statistical tools which are there and according to that statistical tool he is going to prove that what are the outcomes of that specific research. It is an attempt to pursue truth through the methods of a study. Means it is an attempt to pursue truth. Whatever research you are going to do, you have to prove that this is the point which is being truth in this study. And when we are going to find that this is the truth, 
we are going to say that yes, our hypothesis has been accepted. Observation, comparison and experiment. Observation means we are observing certain things. Sometimes you have to see, you have to wait for the time. In the stock market, you have to observe the things that what are the new data every day you are going to find in the stock market, whether the market is going to on high, whether the market is going to low, every day you have to do. Any research day based on the financial derivatives, every day you have to take the data. And on the basis of that data, you are going to interpret it that the next stock is going to go ahead or it is going to get fall in the future. Now the last one is, in some research is a search for knowledge. Again, you are going to say over here, search for knowledge. Knowledge is there, but you have to search that where this knowledge is going to be applied using objective and systematic methods means using objectives and systematic methods. The different statistical method. If you are going to do a comparative study, automatically the tools which you are going to use should be comparative tools. If you are going to use a descriptive study, you have to prove that whether the hypothesis is accepted by using different parametric or non-parametric test. And to find the solutions of a problem. So, I have told you before also that there is some problem and on the basis of that problem you are going to formulate a hypothesis and on the basis of that hypothesis you are going to apply the statistical tools. If it is a comparative study, the tool of compar uh, comparative studies is going to be applied in the research methodology. If it is a theoretical study, explanatory study, you have to go with the different statistical tools. Now characteristics of a research. What are the characteristics of a good research? Good research means a research which is being very helpful to the society as a whole, a research which is going to give a platform to the area on which the research is being conducted. The first one is the clarity. Clarity means a person who is doing a research should have a proper knowledge that what he is going to do and what contribution he is going to do to the society by his research. He must have a clarity of its objectives. What are the objectives he has framed for the study? And on according to that objective, he has going to develop the questionnaire. According to that objective, he is going to explain the things in his work. According to that objective, he has to make recommendations for the future research. So, a person who is conducting a research should have a clarity of the topic on which he is going to conduct a research. Then, well defined. Well defined means that he should have definition of all each and every point which he is being considering in his research work. It should be properly defined. A person should know that if he is going to use this term, what is the use of this term in his research? He should have a proper platform. The area of the study should be properly defined. For example, it is being confined to the state of Uttar Pradesh. It is well defined, means whatever research you are going to do is only been confined to the area of Uttar Pradesh. If you are going to Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, it is not being applicable. If you are going to write applicable to IT companies only, you are doing a research on HR and you are writing over there that it is applicable to IT industries only, then it is only applicable to the IT industry. It will be not applicable in infrastructure, financial, any other industry. So, it must be well defined. Then the next point is systematic investigation. Systematic investigation means that for starting a research work, you must thoroughly go to the topic. You have to do a lot of research, review literature. Review of literature is very important. When you do a proper review of literature, you are going to find the research gap. And on the basis of the research gap, you are going to get certain statement of problems. On the statement of problems, you are going to define your objectives. And on the basis of that objectives, you are going to define the hypothesis. You are going to make the hypothesis. And on these hypotheses, 
you are going to make your questionnaire schedule anything which you are going to which whichever method you are going to take and predicting analyzing that data findings conclusions and suggestions it means it's a systematic process next one is language the language used should be very important if you are conducting a research in a hindi belt area you have to use hindi as a language if you are going to do a research in us obvious english is a language the scandinavian countries they have different languages whatever country you are doing to research and the society for which the research has been conducted it is very important that language used it should be properly analyzed the words which you are going to use the phrases which you are going to use it should be acceptable to the society as a whole you have to use a language of gratitude you have to use very clear and simple phrases in that language too title 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 of the research says everything whatever title of the research you are going to take an analytical study of human resource management in the indian software industry in india the title itself is saying that it is an analytical study it is a study of human resource management it is based for the indian it companies who are operating in india only and this research is highly useful for all the it industries who in future are going to operate in india importance if you get take a topic and that topic is of no use for the society then your research is of no use so while considering a topic you have to take care that whatever topic you are going to take should have a proper importance for the society as a whole the more important the topic is the more credit a research is to because as a researcher you are contributing to the society logical now logic is very important if you say any wavered sentence and you say it has been proved it's of no use the hypothesis you frame should be proper and should be matching with the universe and the sample we cannot frame a hypothesis which is not relevant so while doing a research we have to see that it should have a proper logic and this logic should be for the welfare of the society as a whole now types of research research is based on three types the first is application of research studies that is on the basis of its application on the basis of its objective and on the basis of the inquiry on the basis of application means whatever research you are going to do where it is going to be applied whether it is being applied for the pure science pure science means the person who are sitting at the back and studying a lot pure science means someone who are working for the datas of the nasdaq bsc nsc at the back offices and saying that what are the future shortfalls or the future falls in the market or future uprise in the market time series is one of the statistical tool which is being used over here while there is also applied sciences applied means the area where this study is going to be applied and how it can be beneficial for the society on the basis of objective there are four methods which we can consider on the basis of objectivity the first one is the correlation research correlation means whatever data we are going to take whatever study we are going to take we have to correlate that whether 
it is the first term is correlated with the other or not what is the impact of first on the second whether the what is the impact of second on the third means causal relationship cause and impact relationship second one is descriptive you have to describe the things here in the research work we have to describe that what are going what are the things which is going to be happening just we are going to write it describing each and everything exploratory research here we don't have an idea that what we are going to get in the future in exploratory research we hardly can frame a hypothesis why because we are exploring the things unless and until we can know that what is there how can we frame an hypothesis so here exploration has been required bosco de gama christopher columbus has explored the things and find that here is a country here is another country so it's an exploratory study then explanatory research how why when the researcher ask that why the things are going to happen in this way how the things are going to happen what is the usefulness of these things so he has to explain the things and then he is used to go and explain these things he is going to apply that's not to research now the third method is on the basis of inquiry inquiry means here the data is in relevant here the data is very relevant that is whether it is qualitative study or quantitative quantified study the structured approach and non structured approach which is also known as unstructured approach the structured approach means whatever you are going to do you are going to make it in frame unstructured means you have to explore the things and according to the qualified data you are taking the data and exploring the things let's understand these things you know more broader term on the basis of application pure research involves developing and testing theories and hypotheses that are intellectually challenging to the researcher but may or may not have practical implication at the present time or in the future means it is very important but in the present time it might not be important for the society in infrastructure infrastructure area you will find there are a lot of areas which are been developing where we can make a bridge where we can make the road why to get the best outcome to boost the economy to get the things at the right time to the people who required so here it is a pure research means the research work is going on but it might not be needed in the present scenario applied research is done to solve specific practical questions for policy formulation administration and understanding of a phenomena it can be exploratory but is usually descriptive it is almost always done on the basis of basic research means in applied research you can explore certain things but in a descriptive form now you take an example when you be all our children we used to have an interest in a specific game some people like to play cricket some football some tennis the first thing we used to have is we used to see the things for example cricket our father our parents used to see cricket we are being attracted towards cricket and we started seeing the cricket so cricket when we started seeing a cricket and the rules and regulations which the authorities are making is just a pure research that devices which are they are making for the protection of the players the stadiums which are we are making so it's a pure research as a player as a athlete you are not going to explore the ideas but when you start playing cricket you get certain rules and regulations that you require a bat you require a ball you require a stumps so this is what this is applied research you are applying the same things for that and according to your area you are going to make your rules okay now 
on the basis of objective descriptive research attempts to describe systematically a situation problem phenomena service or program or provides information about living conditions of a community or describes attitude towards an issue here a researcher used to describe you have got a topic for a research you have taken example of a cricket match and what a commentator is doing he is describing the things baller has ball the batter has put the ball to the off side it is going to be six you are describing the things whenever any topic you are going to take an analytical study of human resource management if i have said means you have to analyze the things and write it descriptively that what is human resource management what are the parameters you have taken what are the companies you are taking when the companies have started working what are the human resource they are having so you have to describe it and you are going to write it so this is known as the descriptive study correlation research correlation research i have told you causal relationship cause and impact relationship that attempt to discover or establish the existence of a relationship interdependence between two or more aspect of a situation means what are the interdependence of the two values if you are going to see a cricket match that what are the chances of winning of the two countries this is correlation every time the two countries used to meet what are the percentage of chances that india is going to win or what are the percentage of chances that australia is going to win if australia and england is going to play a match the statistician used to say that this is the stadium here seven times they have played and on that seven times three times this country has won four times this country has won so this is a statistical tools but on that day you have to prove so there is a correlation what is the combination of team they are going to play with so it's all a correlation activity then the next one explanatory research explanatory research means it has to clarify that why and how there is a relationship between two or more aspect of a situation or a phenomenon why and how why these things are happening if it is happening then why it is happening you have to write over here and how it is happening again you have to write over here so it is very important to in an explanatory research you have to explain each and every parameters you have considered for the research exploratory research as i have told you exploratory research is undertaken to explore an area where little is known or to investigate the possibility of undertaking a particular research study that is pilot study feasibility study in practice most studies are combination of the first three categories okay exploratory study as i have told you that here we don't have got the knowledge that what is going we are going to get the result what we are going to get in the result we don't know the findings we have just said that this is going to happen when the covid came no one knows what is going to happen so the exploratory research is started exploring different dimensions how you are going to save your life how you are going to protect the society how you can boost the economy how you can reach to the people who are not being reached and reached so these things are covered in the area of exploratory research in research the first three method that is descriptive correlation and explanatory is highly used now on the basis of inquiry there are two methods a structured method and a unstructured method in a structured method the structured approach to inquiry is usually classified as quantitative research it is being used in quantitative research it means whatever data you are going to use over here is quantified the ages age of person age of male age of female age of students if you are going to do research on financial derivatives you have to take the price of the share on the specific date specific month specific year 
you have to take the data bank of NSC BSE and on that data you are going to base your, you have to conduct your study. Then here everything that forms the research process, objectives, design, sample and the question that you plan to ask of respondent is predetermined. Here whatever you are going to do, you are going to frame a questionnaire, all the questions, questions are numbered and if you're, you have got 100 respondent, you are going to give each and every respondent the same questionnaire. Means your questions are pre-structured and according to that you are going to get your responses. Right? So here in the structured approach, you must have a quantified data and all the methods, all the steps are pre-structured, how you are going to conduct your research. In the unstructured approach, unstructured approach generally based on the qualified data. Qualified data means a data which is being in rank, what is good, what is bad, poor, what is healthy, unhealthy, these are the qualified data. Here you have to rank. If I say that who is the most beautiful person, so everyone has got different views. If I say who is the most healthiest person, everyone has got different views. Right? So here rank is being given. If you are going to a mall and you have to select a shirt, how are you going to select a shirt? Automatically there are different shirts on the basis of price, on the basis of quality, on the basis of brand, on the basis of the color combination, you have to see. And then you pick two, three, but you have to take one. So you rank this, 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 this. I have got this one, this color I have, so I am going to leave this. This I used to have before also, leave this, this is the okay. So this is being selected. So here in the unstructured approach, called Quantified data is being used. This approach allows flexibility in all aspects of the research process. It is more appropriate to explore the nature of a problem, issue or phenomena without quantifying it. As you all know, it is a flexible approach. It is very much flexible that how you are going to explore the research. Now problems in effective research. In the previous topic, we have seen the types of research and we have also seen that what are the characteristics of good research. Now we used to see that what are the problems in effective research. What are researchers used to find? What are the problems which are researchers used to face? A researcher used to face by what are the problems a researcher is going to face in his research. The first one is lack of motivation. Motivation plays a very important role for any research. If a researcher is highly motivated, motivated towards his contribution and his work, motivation towards the quality of the work, motivated towards how fast he is going to complete his research. But if a research is not being motivated, motivation plays a very important role. If he is not being motivated, then automatically the research will take a great time. And the more a research work takes a time, the less le relevant it will become for the society. Second is lack of self-confidence. As I have told you that research is a systematic approach. Here from writing of the first chapter to the last chapter, you required a writing skills, you, st you required statistical tools and application of statistical tools, you required how to get the findings, conclusions and suggestions. So, you must be well versed 
so when you are not well versed with the concept of research the automatically your confidence declines and once the confidence declines a researcher finds difficult to conduct his research poor time management time management is what if you are going to conduct a research time is very important as i have told you the less time you have taken to complete your research the more that research will contribute to the what's the society so here framing of a questionnaire and as soon as you frame a questionnaire you should give that questionnaire to the respondent and as soon as the respondent fills that questionnaire and gives you back you have to do the analysis get the finding conclusions and suggestions and apply that in your research work and get the work published if you are sitting in a year 2023 getting your questionnaire filled and you are going to analyze that questionnaire in the year 2025 it's of no use for the research as well as for the society so timing is very important next one lack of focus or direction generally a researcher used to take his research on the basis of certain literatures or review of literature which has been done in the past sometimes influence of the society of his friends peers teachers also makes him to accept or to get involved in a research in a area of research in which he hasn't have no interest so here if the researcher hasn't have got the focus and the direction automatically it's a problem for he himself to get the proper result limited support limited support means what first one is the money if you ha don't have got a good budget you are not going to get a good data because you have to go and collect the data from different areas which require money then timing in the office hours if you are going to conduct a study on the it companies of hr you have to reach there and meet the people in the office hours whether they will permit you or not so you have to take the appointments prior appointments and on the basis of that prior appointments you have to reach there and conduct your question uh, conduct your interviews stuck in comfort zone this is the basic problem which each and every researcher is to do comfort zone if you are living in prayagraj you try to get each and every data in prayagraj only you can find your study up to prayagraj only you don't want to go to any other city any other state to get the rate why because you are stuck in the comfort zone you mail the people you whatsapp the people and you want to get the data at your place only so moving away from the comfort zone brings a quality in a research fear and failure taking risk fear and failures maximum researcher used to say that we have framed this hypothesis and if our hypothesis has been rejected then what this is not a good platform for research if it has been rejected okay it's been rejected the future researcher are going to say your work should be original you don't have to change your hypothesis you don't have to change your data if your hypothesis is rejected then you have to write that this is the parameters on which hypothesis is being framed and this is being rejected due to this certain cause lack of relevant experience if a researcher hasn't have any experience prior experience for the research automatically it will prevent him for 
exploring the new dimensions in research. He, she hasn't have any idea how to conduct a research. So, these are the some points which a researcher used to face while conducting a research. Lack of motivation, lack of self-confidence, poor time management, lack of focus or direction, limited support, stuck in comfort zone, fear or failure taking risk, lack of relevant experience. Now, what are the precautions to be taken for effective research? When you are going to conduct a research, you are going to present that research work to the society, to the stakeholders who are directly or indirectly affected by that research. The first one is length of the report. A question arises that what is the suitable length of a research work? Some say 500, 600 pages, some say 200 pages, some say 100 pages. So no one can say that what is the relevant size. Yes, it should have all the points which is relevant to the topic and should be briefed in a specific manner. You have to explain all the dimensions, whatever objectives you have framed, three, four, five objectives. You have to explore all the four, five objectives. You have to write all the four, five hypotheses over there. And according to that, you have to do your research work and findings, conclusions and suggestions should have a proper relationship. Next point, not be dull. Your research writing should have some enthusiasm. A person who is reading your research work should have a curiosity that what are the findings. Wow, this is a work which is being done. It is very good. So, you should not write in a simple manner, writing, writing, writing. A person who is going to read feels dull. You have to take new points. You have to explore new dimensions. Research again, over again. And whatever you feel that this is the best, you are going to write over there. Then must contain all vital information related with topic. The research work should contain all the vital information related to the topic. As previously I have told you an example, an analytical study of human resource management in the Indian IT industry. Here, your research work should be confined for human resource management, that too in the IT company, that too in the IT companies who are working in the periphery of India, and for the nation. So, the topic itself says that what are the areas you are going to explore and on these four areas you are going to explore to write your research. Then findings, conclusions and suggestions must interrelate to each other. Maximum research work has got different findings, conclude in a very haphazard manner and suggest something different. No, this is not the way. The best way of presenting a research in the present scenario is this, that if you have got five hypotheses, out of that five hypotheses, you have five statistical tools, you have tested that hypothesis on the basis of that statistical tools. You have got the five findings. So you have only going to get five findings only because you have got five hypotheses. And for that five findings, you are going to conclude five, six, seven points, I think so. Conclusion, maybe for five findings you are going to conclude in ten points. And for that ten points whom you are concluding, the session will be also ten points. So, there must have a relationship between finding, conclusion and suggestion. One thing more I want to clear over here. Some people used to write findings, suggestions and conclusion. It is wrong. Why? Because you cannot conclude a thing and suggest. You have to first conclude the things and then suggest. Okay? So here it should be considered that finding, conclusions and suggestion must 
interrelate to each other. Report layout must be well thought. A researcher should know that how his research work will be in future. The layout of the research should be properly managed. He should know that what are the font size he is going to use, what are the pages which he is going to use, the layout, it, whether it is a descriptive study, explorative study, how many chapters you have got. So everything will be properly pre-structured, then free from topological errors. A researcher must see that his research work should be free from any grammatical mistakes free from any spell mistakes. So, these should be properly taken care of. Must have a logical analysis. Time and again I have told you that whatever statistical tool or models you are going to use for a research work should have a logical and relevant base. If you are going to apply a chi-square, automatically chi-square being applied for three things, test of homogeneity, test of goodness of fit, test of independence. So whatever research you are going to do, it should must have a logical base. Must be a original work, a research which you are going to do is your own idea. You must know that why you are exploring this field and if you are exploring this field, then why? What is the relevance of this research to the society as a whole? Must solve some intellectual problem. Intellectual problem is what? Means whatever research you are going to conduct should be beneficiary for the society as a whole. We have seen atom bomb also, which has got a destructive impact on the whole world. So here whatever research a person used to conduct should have intellectual solution. Then annexure and appendix must be numbered. It is very important because whosoever is reading your work and wants to say that from where you are going to get that data. So appendix, annexures, he had to see. If you have to see the picture photographs, tables, charts, everything should be numbered over there. The more best outlay you have given in your research work, the more acceptable your work is to the society. References and bibliography must be mentioned from where you are going to get the text. If you are taking a test from any book, you have to properly give citation over there, references must be properly made, footnotes, end notes should be properly made, bibliography from which books you are going, you have taken help, what are the libraries, what are the websites you have explored, everything should be given over there. So that the future researchers who are going to conduct the research should have a proper idea from where they are going to get the data. Indexing is the most important as it is the blood of any research report. Indexing. From chapterization, we have seen that in each and every book we have got indexed. From chapterization to the last page, it is very important that indexed and the page number should properly match. If a person wants to go to an analysis portion, he should directly go and explore the analysis portion by seeing the index that on page number such and such the analysis portion is starts. If he wants to go and explore your findings, he should directly know from index that from which page your findings starts, from which point your conclusion starts, from which page your solution starts. So indexing is very important. By seeing an index, your work is evaluated, right? So this is a brief of research methodology. Should go through this lecture. If there is any queries, you can ask. Thank you.